Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Metricon's Design Trends Home Office Live webinar. My name is Chris Carroll. I will be your host for today's session. I'll tell you a bit more about myself and introduce our other presenters to you in a moment. But let's just start off by saying, welcome. What a year 2020 has been. Um, for those of you sitting watching at home, it's kind of become the new norm, spending time inside. It's definitely been a bit of a game changer in terms of how we are working. Uh, friends and family that I'm speaking to are either heading back to work full time, but the majority of them are either doing a bit of a split between work and home or kind of moving toward home as a full-time gig when it comes to work. So our goal today is that regardless of which of those categories you fall into, you'll get to the end of the webinar with a bit more inspiration, ideas and understanding as to how you can make your home office space beautiful and hopefully even better than the one you have at your current workplace. So that is our goal. Uh, hopefully we get there um, by the end of today's webinar. Just a bit of housekeeping to talk you through initially, just so you can get a bit of an understanding um, of how to get the most out of today's presentation. So the first thing it would be wise to do is to go to your view options at the top of the screen and set your view options to side by side mode. That will allow you to see me and our other presenters, as well as the uh, inspirational slides will take you through uh, this afternoon as well. Down the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A box. It's really important and we encourage you to utilize that box uh, throughout today's webinar. Uh, pop your questions in there and we will aim to answer them during our dedicated Q&A session uh, toward the end of the webinar. Uh, there are some interactive polls that will pop up uh, throughout, so we do encourage you to take part in those. They're pretty easy and pretty straightforward, so we'll let you know when they are. Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind is that there is a chat box to the left of the Q&A box. So we are gonna be highlighting some tools and resources online that you can visit to get more ideas and inspiration after today's session. So we'll pop the links in that chat box as well. So they are the main housekeeping elements to keep in mind as we move through the webinar. Uh, and there's a fair bit to get through on the agenda today. So I'll talk you through what you're gonna get. Uh, as I said, our goal that I get you feeling really inspired uh, about your home office. So we're gonna talk through the perfect location for the office, making the most of the space. We're gonna talk through storage solutions as well. Take you through our uh, desks and chairs, the relationship between both of them and how to get the most out of those when shopping. Uh, a quick guide to ergonomics. We're gonna talk through lighting, uh, how to set up the perfect desk. And as I said, heaps of time for question and answers as well. So do utilize that Q&A box. And I know that some of you, uh, when you registered, put forward some questions as well. So we aim to address all of those for you too. Welcoming our other presenters, we both have uh, Ricky Delisio, Metricon's Design Manager, and Jacinta Evans, Metricon's Senior Interior Designer on board. Ricky and Jacinta, great to have you here. Great to Thanks. be here. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for having us. All of us in Victoria have been in lockdown for so long, so it's so nice to see these guys today in the Mount Waverley Theatre, uh, to see familiar faces again that aren't just the people who work at the supermarket. So <laughs> great to see you both. Uh, Ricky is at the forefront of Metricon's phenomenal designs uh, and Jacinta puts together beautiful uh, display home lookbook themes as well. So these guys are very well versed uh, in the interior space. As I said, they're on the front line every day designing beautiful homes and have uh, obviously put together a number of offices over their time with Metricon. Uh, Ricky, Jacinta, you've both been at Metricon for quite a while. Ricky, how long have you been in the team for? Uh, 10 years, Chris. It's uh, been years. a while. It felt like That's yesterday, a long time. But it's, it's, uh, it's been a journey, great journey. And Jacinta, I know you can better that. Talk us through how long you've been at Metricon for. Yeah, about 14. 14? Yeah. That's crazy. I don't I don't feel like people stay in jobs for more than a couple of years now. So Metricon are obviously doing something right uh, on that front. Uh, great to have you both here. For those of you watching, I will also be uh, talking you through today's presentation. I already introduced myself as Chris Carroll. I'm behind TLC Interiors, which is an interior design studio, uh, which helps people uh, both in Melbourne and Sydney make their homes amazing. And it's also an interior design blog. Uh, which enjoys uh, 100,000 unique visitors each month. So when I'm not working there, I'm presenting Metricon events and any opportunity I have to talk through design and decorating, I'm there. So you're in, you're in good hands today for all of you watching at home between the three of us. Um, we have another special guest that I'll introduce you to shortly. So let's kick off. Obviously, a home office is all about creating a home that inspires you every day. We know that home offices are becoming more important. As I said, Australian businesses are realising um, the value of, of setting up a work from home space. Um, so Ricky, talk us through why they have become more important. I mean, I touched on obviously the work work is changing, but is there more to it than that? Uh, there is. You know, it's a, it's a space, I suppose, you know, um, 
realestate.com did a survey um, probably about three or four months ago. And one of the, the biggest um, hits or people researching is is home office. So there's there's an increased demand and, and obviously, you know, we're building homes. So we need to understand what, what buyers are looking for and, and what spaces um, are high on their agenda. And, and obviously, you know, with the whole pandemic, you know, working from home is really been at top of uh, top of the list, and and it's not just one or two people working. You're talking about you know at one stage complete families with parents and kids working from home. So having the right space um, to be able to execute or be productive in this space is very important. On that note, let's kick into the first of our interactive polls. This is going to be a nice scene setter for those of you uh, watching today to talk us through what time of type of home office setup you have at the moment. Do you already have a dedicated home office? Is it a study nook? I know many of you are working at the dining room table or at your kitchen uh, island. Um, do you have a desk in your bedroom? Or perhaps um, it's other, perhaps you're working from bed, which sounds really comfortable, but maybe not as productive as it could be. <laughs> or maybe some of you don't even have a home office, which um, really does bode well for you watching this presentation today. So just, um, yeah, do let us know what your current home office setup is. Really interested to see um, yeah, where it's at. So the results have just popped up on the screen now. So 45% of you have a dedicated home office, which is great. So you've obviously already taken that next or that necessary step to go, right, I need a home office, I'm going to be home more. But um, obviously you're here watching today because it's probably not as amazing as it could be. Perhaps there are certain elements of the office that you know aren't working for you at the moment. So you're going to get a lot of inspiration to take it to the next level as you move through today's webinar. Let's talk about setting up the perfect office because there's more to it than people imagine. People think it's just a desk and a chair, but there's so much more. And I guess the thing is, location is the most important element, Ricky. Thinking about where that's going to be in your home and then executing it correctly is a necessary starting point. Yeah, that's right. And, and no, the dining table isn't the right spot to, uh, to, I know, you know, having conversation with a lot of people, um, it just finds the, you know, it just seems, seems to be the place where people um, tend to gravitate towards. But I think what you need to sort of understand is that separation between work and home. So I think finding the, the right space, um, you know, anywhere in the home can be a, a good space. But I think what, what you need to consider is a quiet space and a space away from disru disruptions. Um, I think one, one of the key points there. And then avoid being in areas that are, are, are highly trafficked. So if you are, if you, if you do happen to be in those kind of spaces, is the space able to be closed off? So does it have a physical door or a screen that creates that separation between those zones? Um, and a real popular one too, if you are working from home and you do get visitors, um, one of the, the you know big draw cards is locating that space at the front of the home. So rather than having people you know visit you at home and, and it's for work reasons, rather than venturing through the rest of the home, having them at the front you know, um, and easy access um, and great for natural light too. Yeah, that's really important. And I mean, on the on the topic of natural light, Jacinta, does bring you into the conversation. It's nice to daydream. It's nice to put the office in a spot that is not only productive and great to work at, but has a beautiful view as well. And there's some great examples here of Metricon Homes that do that wonderfully. I mean, you guys always, when you're designing homes, think about the outlook. So that's a really important element to take into account as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Chris. I mean, if, especially if you're going to be there all day, it is a place that you want to feel um, that you're still in a nice place and something that's still, um, you know, exciting to be in. Um, so windows are a great um, element to have your desk near. Um, and I guess it's what you're looking out to as well. Obviously, on, on that slide, on the image on the left, you know, if that was just the plain, the plain fence line, then it's still not going to feel too inspiring and, and sort of... Um, I guess, giving you sort of um, creative sort of mind to, to get into the work mode. Um, but, you know, having that beautiful greenery out there just get, still creates a lovely sort of relaxing space. So, yeah, I think it's really looking out beyond those windows too, you know, what's out, what's out there to, um, yeah, to give you sort of a nice backdrop. And the size of the window too, I think, plays a massive mm. part, guys. I think, um, you know, proportion to the room, the size of the window um, needs to be substantial as, as you see in those images. Um, and just from a landscape perspective, externally, water features really play a massive part. You know, just that soothing, you know, trickle of water as you're sort of executing your day-to-day -day tasks um, is always nice. 
Yeah, and I think this quote that's on the screen now for viewers sums it up perfectly. A, a dedicated and stimulating home office space is shown to increase productivity, offer a better work-life balance and decrease stress levels. So Jacinta, that work-life balance component is very important and really wise for people to think about because um, depending on where your office is situated, and this goes back to you know selecting the right place in your home, um, sometimes it's easy to have a, a cut away from, from work when work finishes so how do you how does that impact you know the work life balance where you put it where you put yeah this? that's right chris i mean like like ricky was saying the dining room table isn't generally uh the best place especially if it's around your kitchen area and you're looking at you've tried to start work and you've left your dishes there in the morning you know sitting right next to that isn't going to keep you um, productive in your work because you're going to start thinking about other things in your home. Um, you know, and I think keeping your desk uh, nice and clean as well. So it's not, you know, you're not using the desk for any other purpose than for your work. Yeah. And Ricky, on that point, um, in terms of where it's situated, do things like soundproofing or putting doors on what might've already been an open room, does that come into play as well? Just figuring out how to close yourself off if you need to? Yeah, definitely. You know, there's a, you know, we display our homes quite open and, and there's a reason for that. We want that open plan living feel. Um, but when you're practically using the space, uh, the ability to close off those parts of the room for the rest of the home, I think is very important. Um, it could be a solid door or a screen, as I touched on before, or some really nice feature glass insert doors. Um, still lets the light through uh, with trans translucent glazing, but provides that, that factor of privacy. Yeah, and just on the screen here, obviously some examples of, um, you know, study nooks in spaces as well. So, you know, not everyone has a luxury of, you know, a home where you can have a dedicated room for the office. So study nooks do become really crucial for, for one person or for more people, yeah? Yeah, um, and it's, it's a massive trend at the moment um, in a lot of our homes where, you know, we don't have the space for a designated room. Study nooks still, um, you know, create... Um, the ambience and the feel for a home office. Um, I think some of the, um, you know, important factors there is that, um, you know, decide on how many people are using the space. Um, that will determine on how big the nook needs to be and, and mm -hmm. the amount of storage as well. Um, what I tend to um, like to do in these kind of nooks is if you've got a, if you're working off a computer screen, look at wall mounting that on the screen. Um, bit of a, a, a space saver as well. Um, and then look at the depth of your uh, nooks, you know, ideally as a minimum, um, no less than 600 in, in depth of the desk, um, greater than that, you know, would be ideal because you need to consider, you know, your layout space and, and you know, how you, you perform your day to day tasks. And just into some really nice examples of Metricon homes here where, you know, I think this is a really nice illustration of thinking outside the box because people are often thinking of offices or nooks in main living areas, but great examples here of where some are in bedrooms or near en suites or near, you know, in, in unexpected pockets. So it's nice to really look around your home and think where you might be able to slot one in. Yeah, I mean, they can definitely be become quite versatile too. You know, that image in the middle that can be used in your morning just for getting ready um, or it could be used as a study nook. Um, I guess the great thing with some of these as well, like obviously with our study, study nooks, you're looking up against um, generally a wall. So think about um, what you're going to apply behind that wall. Um, is it just plain plaster? You know, do you look at a, a mirror for um, if you need sort of to bounce some light around, um, putting a wallpaper there um, just to give you some sort of interest um, or even the top left where we've put an actual laser cut screen so again to allow more light to come into that room and also then being able to see out um, into other spaces as well so it visually doesn't feel like you're you know you're, you're staring at a wall yeah and Ricky I love that all these spaces don't read as office you know they're quite luxurious and they're quite you know they blend in beautifully with the theme of the rest of the home yeah, and I think that's, uh, it comes down, I think one of the important things is how much time are you going to spend in these spaces? Um, are, you, are you using this space for half an hour of a day? Are you using it for eight hours a day? That is going to sort of really dictate how um, the space is used. Um, highlight windows, you know, is a great means of um, getting space in. I, ideally, not not something, or not a room, you'd want to work in for eight hours or highlight window. Um, you even consider moving that window down to, um, desk height so you can actually view out um, into the out outdoors um, so yeah very versatile I think we've come a long way with uh, with nooks and the ability to create spaces like this yeah exactly 
So getting onto storage solutions, obviously this is very important because you guys were saying a moment ago, you know, if, if it is on site, if you can see the study or your home office every day, you really don't want all the clutter and all the mess out on display. So you really want to keep it quite clean and quite tidy. Uh, Ricky, talk us through some of, the, some of the things to think about when you're looking at how much storage you need and how to organise that. Yeah, I think it's a combination. It's a combination of shelving. So as you as you just touched on, ability to book, put your books on shelves, but there's the ability to hide things as well. Things like printers and scanners that are quite unsightly. Um, you know, look at sort of drawers or cupboards that you could utilize for those kind of items. Um, and, and look about, have a look at minimalizing clutter. So, you know, have one out, you know, out on the desk, what you're going to use on a regular basis. Anything else, um, have a spot for it tucked away. Um, pin boards, are, are, you know, a are, are really good tool. Um, anything that you could sort of see at that eye level height, um, just, you know, day-to-day -day tasks or reminders, um, really, really, really good tools there. And cable management, obviously very important as well, because nothing drives me more mad than cords hanging out everywhere. So just into thinking about where screens are going to go, how many things need to be plugged in, and then having that well organised is pretty crucial as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, we When we're designing our study desk, we're always thinking of, yes, where the um, electrical points are, where your data points are, um, perhaps keeping them up quite, quite high underneath the desk so you're not seeing all the cords down. They, they're kept up quite high and then even having cutouts in your um, desk for those wires to come through or um, have it you can get sort of like cable um, cable boards um, where it can all sort of connect through and into but um, yeah they can become quite messy um, so it is definitely something to sort of think about. For sure and I guess that that kind of plugs into the storage options in general and looking at you know the three different options when you are planning out your home office and some people really do want you know, the, the three that are listed here are kind of good, better and best in terms of options. And, you know, it, it is important to have a think about how permanent you want the home office to be, right, Ricky, because you can you can fully plan it out and start with professional joinery or do something that, that feels less permanent. Yeah, that's right. And, and what I like about this good, better, best approach is um, it, it comes down to budget. So if you can afford it, um, you know, the fully built-in option, the professional drawing options, um, probably ideal. Um, everything's pretty much worked out in terms of, um, you know, the design of it. Um, but then you've got the retrofit versions as well. So, um, you know, if you move into your home or you're renovating, um, it's something to consider um, after the fact. And those retrofit uh, versions um, have come a long way. Um, they don't sit wall to wall, obviously. They they sit on a wall, um, but you know, great great options. And then the temporary option is is really the loose furniture that you buy from uh, the the retail stores, a freestanding desk or a bookshelf. So, um, yeah, my option, you know, if it, if it was my place, um, I love the sort of built in feel. It gives you you know more of a sophisticated look. Um, you know, and, and it's built in. So it's something that's going to stay, um, you know, when you sell the home as well. Yeah, excellent. I guess what it says on the screen there is opt for a desk with built-in bookcases or storage, particularly if you're short on space. So Jacinta, that's really important to think about because it's fair to say, you know, if you're not planning out and thinking about what you need to store, then you're going to end up with a home office, regardless of which one of those three it is, that doesn't really work for you. I mean, even if it looks amazing, you're not going to have the storage capacity or the ability to put everything away neatly. Correct, Chris, that's right. I mean, even those shelves there, you really need to think about what you're going to place on them. You know, is it tall enough for folders if that's what you're going to need? Um, do you need them to be adjustable because you're you're using a number of different um, a number of different items? Um, and definitely drawers, you know, it might have some small narrow drawers for keeping um, lots of, you know, staplers and 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 pens um, as opposed to the deep drawers like that if you're only putting sort of small small accessories in them yeah beautiful and i love that i love this image i feel like this image ticks off all of the boxes you guys were just talking about in terms of beautiful desk space lower storage uh some you know room up top to display stuff and then a beautiful outlook so it really is good for people watching to think about the coming together of all of those elements right because it's not just it's not just one it really is a, you know a number of things to think about yeah, and that's not a complex solution either. It's, um, you know, it's, it's ticking all the boxes, natural light, you know, plenty of bench space, um, good storage solution and an inviting space, a space that you want to, you know, be in. So, yeah, one of my favourite images, that one. 
And speaking of creating inviting spaces, I want to bring on our special guest to have a chat. We've got the lovely Georgia here from s &A Living. So I'm going to bring Georgia up on the screen now and have a bit of a chat to us. Um, Georgia will encourage you to come onto the screen. I'm sure we'll see you in a moment. But Georgia is from s &A Living who create beautiful wall furniture. If you go onto their website, which we'll um, kind of drop into your chat box um, a little bit later, you'll see a lot of their beautiful um, custom solutions in terms of entertainment units and shelving. But recently SNA Living have moved into the home office space. So they're creating beautiful offices um, for Metricon Homes, which is amazing. So we're gonna do our best to get um, Georgia up on the screen in a moment. Hopefully she can come on through. Hello, lovely Chris. How are you? Yeah, great. Good to see you too. So you're on the screen, which is awesome. Sorry, I was having some tech difficulties there. So That's talk, okay. us through, talk us through this beautiful range. As I said, there are um, beautiful solutions from you guys in the way of entertainment units and shelving, but great that you're moving into the home office space because this is a bit of a game changer for people who are a bit overwhelmed or don't want to go to the expense or trouble of finding the right custom joiner and going through that process. So s and Living make it really easy. So talk us through some of the solutions that, that you have for people. Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, um, s and Living is an all-inclusive wall furniture kind of joinery option. Um, so we're actually a hundred year old staircase business and we're fourth generation. So innovation, especially with SNA living our new baby is kind of at the fore of everything we do. Um, given this year in 2020, as we were speaking about before, I mean, we already offer a range of high and slim sideboards, entertainment units, you know, bed heads. So bookshelves and desks were kind of a dead giveaway for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially, you know, the Metricon customer is, you know, wanting more kind of options in their color selection process, especially at that lower cost point, um, something unique, something that looks really European at half the cost. And there's kind of something in there for everyone. So um, we've got a range of, of four different sizes and two different configurations um, with our new desk range. So on the screen, you can see here, this is one of our larger double landscape options. This is a 3,600 long. Um, in the landscape as well, it also comes in an 1800 mil long. Um, and we've got a portrait option as well, which will probably be on the next slide. But um, the backboard sits slightly higher, as you can see to the left hand side, that comes in two sizes. So 1800 and 2400. So there's kind of a sweet spot in there for everyone. Um, that's, what, that's what I love about it, Georgia. I think the, 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 the way you can modulize these systems um, to be a single desk, to be a double desk, to, to cater up, you know, to fill the space, I suppose. Yeah, um, absolutely, Ricky. And, you know, we've been in partnership with, with Metricon for, for many, many years. So we're very well versed with a lot of their homes and their clientele. Um, so this can be installed within any of the Metricon alcoves. Um, you know, it can be installed on a, on a full length wall. Um, and as I said, the sizing inclusivity and the price points kind of just give customers that really unique option. Um, so it's never kind of been done before and, and we're exclusive with, with all Metricons nationally. So yeah, it's a really, really exciting innovation for us and one that I think will kind of become a solution for a lot of Metricon customers during their color consultation. Yeah, I think so too, Georgia, because I mean, I work with design clients out there in the real world a lot and bring in joiners sometimes. And, you know, you'll say to a customer, okay, so what finish do you want? What color do you want? And they're just so overwhelmed by trying to figure it out that they're always just turning to me going, well, I don't really know. It's, it's all too much for them. So I like that there's customization available, but not, it's, there aren't so many options that it's really overwhelming for people to figure out what they want. Absolutely, Chris. So um, our desks currently in our bookshelves as well at the moment, they come in six different colour variations. They're a really high end finish um, wood mat, so a laminate finish, uh, which looks absolutely beautiful and is something that's really hearty, obviously, for that home office environment too, especially if you've got kids working from that desk as well. So um, we have plans to expand our material range, but yeah, super, super exciting. And I mean, with our, you can probably tell from the images on screen, but with our shelves, backboards, bench tops and cabinets, they're all completely um, changeable in, in finishes. So you can have a different, you know, finish on your shelving compared to your backboard, compared to your bench top and cabinet. We use a 3D visualization system with the customers at their appointment um, so they can see exactly what they're designing and getting. So it's a unique kind of 
solution and there's no smoke and mirrors with joinery there's no you know waiting on quotations and drafting and that kind of thing so it's all consulted within 10 minutes and the customer walks away um, with a cost on site that day so that's pretty unheard of and revolutionary so we're super excited to launch with metricon Yes, I'm I. I mean, I, I, looking at these images here, it's a beautiful solution, very clean solution as well. So I noticed those beautiful trays there and what looks to be, I imagine, cable management because in these beautiful pictures, I'm not seeing cords hanging out anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, renders will do that. They're very beautiful, but yeah. still we, um, we offer unique cable management. So you can probably see under the desk to the lower right-hand side, um, we have a box built out underneath it. Nothing that you'll hit your, your legs on. You could probably fit a small child in that box as well, meaning that <laughs> all your cords are completely concealed and we have um, metal work that covers it. It comes in about five different colorways. And then um, we have a sort of top desk, sort of cord cut out again that's that's surfaced by metal work so your cords can neatly protrude out of the top plug into the back of your laptop or your pc screen um, and yeah as you can probably see on the screen as well so uh, we have an offering of paper trays in portrait and landscape kind of layouts as well they come in five different colorways and we also have the offering of pin boards as well so again kind of you know the innovative ergonomical thinking behind desks and what customers need and what they value in a home office space. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that flexibility to, to sort of add these additional extras and um, design wise, it just looks beautiful. I think SNA living really speaks for itself and we're always changing and adapting to, you know, trends and forecasts in the market as well. So, yeah. And yeah, I think I George, that. So go for so, it just sorry, it. Chris, I was just going to say, I think your colour range works fantastic with our colour range as well. So, you know, there's not one of your colour ranges that we wouldn't put on a display that goes into every one of our themes and lookbooks. They just, yeah, they look amazing. Absolutely, Jacinta. And as I said, um, this is an exclusive product only available to Metricon customers. So um, it's a really unique service and one that's seen nowhere else in the market. And yeah, so it's, it's imperative to us that, you know, we give the Metricon customers that flexibility, but also give them an offering that, yes, you're correct, coincides with their flooring, coincides with their tiling, all of the other unique supplies that you see in the showroom, it will, really kind of works well. Mm. And I love um, the image that's on the screen now of all this beautiful joinery. It's nice that you can go beyond the desk because a lot of people, I feel at this current time that I'm talking to out there um, in the design landscape who are doing home offices, they want the beautiful desk and they want to be able to go beyond that to have a beautiful shelving system like this that can store all of the books because I think libraries, well, I mean, we're probably all reading more, <laughs> spending more time at home this year. So, so much more books and just, you know, a reason to display things. So I love that, you know, you can go beyond the desk and that there are so many different solutions for people. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, bookshelves are another little innovation for us. I mean, you know, bookshelves are something that is kind, kind of underpins the joinery side of the home. It's something that's very common, um, not sort of thought about in too many different ways. So this is our kind of modular take on the bookshelf. Um, it comes in, you know, four different sizes. So you can have the 4,800 on screen. You can go all the way down to a tiny 1,200. Um, the beauty is the height sits at about 1,800. So a lot of of um, clients are really interested to have it next to that 1800 high portrait desk as well um, or just have it you know alongside in the room mm. on another wall and yeah I think you know I think especially coming out of, of COVID in this year I mean everyone as you were saying before is so inspired by creating a beautiful home office environment more than ever before and having sort of these kind of options to display quite a lot but still utilize for storage and there's sort of different configurations as you can see on the screen there's the small shelves that carry through to the larger ones again it just kind of gives the customer that complete kind of solution and option so as I said we're really proud to um to offer something for everyone and I think the Metricon customer is is really unique you know we come from all walks of life so it's important for us to be inclusive for for everyone's kind of needs yeah, perfect. Thanks, Georgia. So just a question for you, Ricky, on that. I mean, a lot of people building Metricon homes are probably thinking through uh, joinery and a solution like this from SNA Living. Is it best to plan that out during the build stage when they're going through the studio or can it come later if they find that, you know, it started off as a guest room and they want to convert it to an office? 
Yeah, and this and this product, this is what I love about this product. You can actually retrofit after the fact. So, provided that you allow for the you know the right you know power outlets, um, this can actually be installed after you move into a home. So if you decide you're in a home, um, and two years down the track you want a bookshelf or a, a, a study desk, um, these can be easily um, retrofitted. You don't need to you know brace uh, or or stud the walls internally. Um, it's all self-supported on the existing frame. So yeah, Matthew tick there. Absolutely, Ricky. And can I just add, guys, as well? It's um, it's it's really beautiful kind of option, you know, for resale also. So this adds so much value to your home, but at the same time, it it's kind of something that can grow with, you know, you as a couple, you as a working couple, you as a family. So, um, yeah, it the the value addition to your home is kind of it speaks for itself. So we're very excited to kind of launch this early to mid December of this year. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's so easy and so customizable and it's fun as well. It's a fun way to do joinery. So that's kind of the backing of everything we've created with this brand in this range. I couldn't agree more, Georgia. Thank you so much for that. We're going to love you and leave you for the moment. We're going to bring you back during the Q&A component toward the end of the webinar. So if anyone has any questions around the s &A Living Range, we'll, we'll bring Georgia back during Q&A. But uh, it's time to move on and talk about the all-important hunt for the perfect desk, the perfect chair, and uh, figuring out you know, the perfect pair because the relationship between them is really important. So we're going to start with the hunt for the perfect desk. Um, and we obviously have already talked about the different options with, with joinery, the s &A living options, and then freestanding. But Ricky, for people who are you know, out there looking on websites, shopping right now, what are some of those important components they should really think about when it comes to the desk? I, I think it need, you need to first determine how many people are going to be using the desk. Um, that will sort of determine the size and shape of, of the desk um, and the height. You know, I think it's very important to um, establish a really good working height. 750 mil um, is pretty much the standard, depending on the height of certain people and their posture. Um, that might vary slightly in terms of getting higher, um, but you want to create um, you know, something special, you know, I think we touched on the cabinetry options, the good, better, best, um, and the standalone units, you know, desks that you buy, you know, from a Freem or a Dez or, um, you know, the good guys, um, you know, they're great for, for um, study spaces as well. And just looking at some of those freestanding solutions here, Jacinta, I mean, there will be people watching who have said, you know, look, Love the look of joinery, not on the radar for me at the moment. I need to kind of go out there and get a freestanding solution. So there's some really nice retail options here that um and different shapes as well. So I think it's important that people do have a think about, you know, what shape do I want? Where is it going to go? And think about depth and width and all that too. Exactly. And I think it, exactly what Ricky was saying, what you're using it for. So, you know, for instance, the top little timber one, it, you know, it's quite a small little desk, so it might just be for um, someone doing some quick study at home. It may not be um, practical for you for all days, as opposed to the um, the one on the bottom left um, with your with being a corner a corner desk, giving you a lot more space and storage. Um, you know, I think you need to think about um, the materials that it's made on. What 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 do you do for a um, a living? Obviously, I I play around with tiles a lot all day, so a glass top. Um, bench shops probably not going to be very practical for someone like myself um, you know thinking about glass can be a bit cold st as um, same as stone as opposed to the warmth of the timber um, and even even sort of extra storage um, using it on the corner like that gorgeous little white one um, you know that's perfect for a, a kid's room if you needed um, a study a study desk and some more solutions here as well. Some that are packed with, uh, you know, more storage than others. And we actually had a question come through from one of our um, viewers, Claire, asking about some clever ways to, you know, increase storage. And it's a beautiful way in the desk on the top, the top left there, that white one, to to have it built in like that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you do use a lot of, um, have a lot of paperwork and a lot um, that you need to be looking at, all those perfect little pigeonholes. Um, 
you know, I think you need to think about things as well, like between uh, are you working off a computer or a laptop? Obviously, that trestle table down below, um, the white one is is beautiful. But where do you put your if you're working off an actual um, computer with a box? Where, where do you put the box? Um, it, it's a bit tricky. They don't generally would fit in that trestle. So then is it is it going to be in the place where your where your desks are, um, where, you, where your chair is? Sorry. So obviously um, something like the top one on the right where it's um, the dark one where there's a lot more room underneath so you could actually you know pop it up on up to one side um, I think something to also think about too is um, the look of your home um, you may want to look at tying your desk into that um, so you can definitely look at sort of styling in, a, in the same sort of theme you know those beautiful white ones there would work so lovely for if you've got a beautiful coastal or sort of country sort of style um, where the beautiful little walnut one would work um, perfectly for someone that's you know a little bit more eclectic um, or a bit sort of mid-century vintage yeah and that picture on the left there from Templeton Webster is a nice illustration of mm -hmm. you know a desk that's going to sit in the middle of the room and face the rest of the room. So often when people are shopping, they go into, you know, the showroom and the desks are pushed against the wall. But if you if you want yours like that, you need to consider the 360, what it's going to look like all the way around because some of those other ones aren't really made to sit in the middle of the room. No, that's right. And exactly. And, and, and like I was also talking about with computers, you know, that works, that works fine for a uh, laptop where it can be, doesn't need to be powered, but it may not work for an actual computer, um, mm. a monitor and box. So an array of beautiful examples here from Metricon Display Homes, and there's a combination of, you know, fixed joinery and freestanding options. The one on the top right there is a good example of what we we're just talking about with a, a desk that it's beautiful and perfect to sit in the centre of the room. It's a bit of a design moment in its own right, whereas some of the other ones down below are situated near windows. And, you know, we discussed the importance of natural light coming through earlier, but um, just some stunning options there. And Ricky, are you finding when designing the display homes that, you know, it is it is a combination that not everyone wants that that, that fixed joinery. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it, it's, it comes down to what are you going to use the space for? So, um, you know, obviously GPOs are, are easier to locate on on sort of um, side walls, um, very difficult to get through the slab, um, you know, and, and especially difficult to retrofit afterwards. So we're seeing a, a, a massive shift or a combination of different styles, you know, home office to nooks to, you know, um, you know, freestanding desks either against the wall or in, in the centre of the, the space. So we're going to talk about one of the trickiest elements to get right, which are office chairs. But before we do that, just want you guys to take part in one of our interactive polls around office chairs. So do you have a proper office chair? Is it a yes? Is it a no? Or do you have a stand-up desk? Um, I've hunted for a very long time for the ideal office chair. And I find that it's usually either the kind of very officey, officey, ugly looking chair, or it's the beautifully upholstered, delicious chair that doesn't really work from an ergonomic perspective. But um, has it been the same for you, Ricky and Jacinta? You find it's normally one or the other? Yeah, I, I think um, office chairs have come a long way. I think there was a whole big, huge perception that, you know, office spaces need to look daggy. Um, they don't, you know, and as Jacinta touched on, now you can sort of, um, morph or blend that into the entire look of the home. I think we've come a long way in this space. Yeah, we've got a, we've got um, the results in, and the, well, seventy three percent of people have a proper office chair. And although we are saying we have a proper office chair, perhaps it's not looking as good as you want it to. So <laughs> let's have a bit of a chat. Um, about finding the right chair because it's really important to obviously have one that looks amazing but you want it to function well for you as well so Ricky kick us off with talking about you know the power of a good chair and you know some of the things you have to consider when you're shopping for one yeah spot on and I, I think people don't consider how important a chair is um, you know you might be sitting in it for seven hours of the day and you really want to feel comfortable um, you know in that space and at that space um, I think the dot points there uh, are pretty good dot points. Um, will the fair, will the chair fit beneath your desk? Um, does it have arms? So it's something to really consider. So um, do you have arms on your chair or is it um, just a, a high back chair, something that you know you can get under, under your desk? Um, is the chair appropriate size for the space? So um, proportion to that space, um, you don't want a sort of lounge, a loungy chair. You want something that you can, you know, maneuver and, and, and get around. Um, and a chair that's very supportive. I know, you know, people suffer from lower back pain um, and half the time that, and that's 
that's a result of a really bad um, office chair. So mm. having a, a good lumbar support um, is, is very good. And a, a chair that's adjustable, um, something that you can adjust in height, um, you know, that has the, the controls to adjust that and something that's very comfortable, I suppose. Um, I know I sit at my desk for sort of seven, eight hours of the time and um, the, the least uh, that I want is an uncomfortable chair. So um, yeah, very important. Yeah, and just into talking about the wheels versus the non-wheels is, is a big issue. And it, I guess when I was hunting for my own chair, I had to consider, you know, am I on carpet? Am I going on hard flooring? Will the wheels work on carpet? Will the non-wheels leave dents in the carpet? So it's, there's more to think about than meets the eye, yeah? There is, and I think also how much are you getting up a lot um, from your desk? Obviously, if you are, it, you know, just having a stationary chair is quite hard to keep pushing in and out as opposed to the wheels. So wheels can be very um, useful, but yes, you do need to be careful of what it's on. Um, I know I have a wheelchair at home in my office and I've got a timber floor. Um, so I generally still need like a carpet mat under that mm. because I find I'm rolling away from my desk. Um, and then the opposite with being on carpet, um, depending on, it can probably depend on the type of carpet you've got, especially if you've got a plush carpet, you would definitely need a mat um, for it because it, you will start to see that traction. Um on the on the plush, you you probably would get away with it a lot more with a with sort of a loop or a weave um, a weave carpet. Um, but I love these images here, Chris, of um, some chairs that are fabulous um, and still look so practical. Um, you know that that beautiful black chair in the middle, the Barossa um, chair, is still looks like it would be a fantastic sort of comfortable upright chair. Um, but something like that, you would need to be very mindful of how tall um, and, and sort of those sides are. Can you get that under your desk or, are they, or is it a bit further back that you don't need it to go um, to go underneath um, as opposed to um, some of the ones along the bottom, um, which would allow you to sort of move them under a little bit more. But, you know, you can see with all of these chairs, they still have got a really nice stylish feel that you could um, – still tie into your home especially if it's on display somewhere what you said about the um the push in ability is very important because it's something people don't think about you don't think about it until yeah. you need to actually do exactly. it and if it's and a it's small space and you need to tuck the chair away and you can't that becomes an issue and it will also depend on the thickness of your bench. Uh, we tend to do a lot of designs. Um, you would have seen some previously of our studies that actually have quite a thick um, bench. Top. We're talking like a hundred mil laminate. So you need to consider that because um, that's that that's a lot deeper um, than just a standard sort of twenty mil or forty mil. So you need to make sure, yeah, there is enough room um, for your chair. Yeah, Ricky, were you going to jump in with something there? Yeah, just the you know, location of um, if you've got a nook and it's a, it is, a, it is within a passageway, I think you need to really consider the type of chair that um, you do select for those spaces. And having something without arms that can be pushed under the desk, yeah, massive tip. Yeah, and it'll, it says it here on the screen. It's important to check the recommended sitting time. You already mentioned that. Thinking about how long you're going to sit in it. But the other thing about a chair, Jacinta, is is thinking about how it works with the overall scheme of the home because if it is in a space that's near a dining room for example maybe you want the office chair to speak to the style of your dining mm. chair rather than feeling like a standalone independent like, office area it can actually look beautiful and blend into the scheme of the rest of the space yeah i mean there's some beautiful ones here that look like they're in a stunning velvet so if you had you know more of a really sophisticated sort of dining space with you know some beautiful um upholstered chairs you know a nice upholstered um upholstered um study chair to go with that would be would be gorgeous um you know the bottom the bottom right with the gold the brass if you had some beautiful brass uh lights over your dining table or kitchen you know that would be a really nice way to kind of tie that into the study space yeah exactly um on that note let's talk have a quick guide to ergonomics because I've bought a lot of office chairs in the past. As I said, it looks nice. You sit in it, you realise after a while you've got back pain, you've got neck pain, you've got shoulder pain. So something has gone wrong along the way. So Ricky, talk us through the main considerations in terms of how you should be sitting in your chair when you're at your desk. Yeah, and these are the recommended, um, you know, um, seating arrangement or positions. You know, make sure that your feet are flat on the floor. Um, the last thing you want is sort of having your feet elevated. Um, and the thighs need to be parallel to the floor. I think that's one of the, big mistakes people make is they probably sit too high in the chair. To, so it's about adjusting 
um, you know, the things around you to make sure that you're seating um, in the right position. Um, hips slightly above your knees, um, something very important that got told, uh, taught to me a number of years ago, um, and I always stop and check. Um, and your arms 90 degree to your desk. So, you know, it's something that, you know, having access to things around you as well is a very important thing. So you don't want to stretch out of your chair to, uh, you know, to get stable or something, just have things in arms reach. Yeah, what you were saying about feet flat on the floor is really important. But if you're a shorty, the last thing you want is, you know, your legs dangling off the chair like that. So you might need to get a foot rest to put your feet on, but ideally you want them flat. You don't want them kind of Correct. dangling. And that's, where, and that's where those adjustable chairs come into play to mm. adjust the height. You know, I think that's um, an investment uh, well made in, 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 in chairs. Yeah, and that's good. Yep, go for it. Sorry, I was just going to say a big habit that um, everyone should probably try to not do. I do it a lot. I was just doing it then and stopped is crossing your legs when you're mm. at your desk. Um, I, I do it a lot, but it is really not good for your back. You really should have both feet flat on the ground. And I, yeah, on that, while we're all confessing our sins, and <laughs> sitting at a desk, I find I'm always leaning forward always start leaning forward closer to the monitor. And what ends up happening is you've, as you said, your back is not against the back of the chair. So then you start getting shoulder issues. So really good for everyone watching when you're buying the chair, go through all of those elements and consider that, you know, when you go to test it out in a showroom and it's, you know, it's wise to go and do that. I mean, online orders are great. You might want to order online, but it is nice to sit in the chair and consider all of these, whether your feet are touching the floor and mm -hmm. you know, how, it's, how it's going to relate to the desk height that you have. So really important to get right. You don't want to kind of regret the purchase. No, and when we are speaking ergonomics, we haven't really spoken about stand-up desks um, either, which it is, it's a personal thing. Um, you know, obviously I think they've still got a little way to go to being a very stylish um, desk, but they are very practical. And in the end, you need to choose what's best for you. Um, you know, if you are someone that does need to stand, that does need that sort of stand and sitting, they are fantastic for that. I, I, I do have one at home, but I have a separate office um, out in out in a back room, um, a back office out in my backyard. So I tend to get away with it. You don't, it's not really part of my home and style, but I love it because I actually sit at 800 high um, for the height, for my height. That is much better for me than the standard sort of 750. So um, they are quite practical for a lot of people because you can, I guess you can decide where you want it to sit as well as stand. You can change that. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about personalising the space. My favourite part, the decorative elements. It's good to get all those other kind of functional uh, things correct. But then once you have your office, you do want to make it your own. You, as I said at the start of the webinar, you want it to be nicer than the office you go into if you're doing a bit of a, a split between the work from home and going into the office situation. Uh, so Jacinda, talk us through personalization. We've, we've kind of touched on that. You do want the office, especially if it's in you know an open zone, to read and be connected to the rest of the space. But what are some of the ways that you can do that? And I'm imagining you don't have to spend a lot of money either if you don't want to. No, no, you don't at all. And look, and you can still use your um, your items that you're going to use every day and still make them stylish. So, you know, if there's lots of books that you use all day, it doesn't mean you have to have them all lined up in a row. You can still have a few laying down and a couple sitting up, maybe with a candle sitting on top and kind of create what we say, um, these sort of vignette sort of styling, making own little sort of little stories is a really still um, nice and kind of interesting way to keep your space um, feeling um, a bit more designed designed. Um, you know, introducing artwork into your study, um, whether or not, you know, beautiful coloured artwork, if you've got quite a neutral room, um, something that um, is kind of loud and vibrant can be quite nice, um, something to keep you inspired all day. Um, it's a great place to bring in um, like your favourite memorabilia um, or little collectibles that you might have collected um, dur during your travel. Um, I I think an indoor plant is a must in a, yeah. in a study. Um, you know, I think uh, especially if it is an area where you can't see a lot of the outdoors, really that greenery um, in your space, I think is fantastic. Yeah, I love, look, you, I love sorry, these go spaces. for yeah. yeah, I love these spaces because you can actually change them. Um, you know, with, with the built-in furniture, it's something that's permanent. Um, with these kind of artworks or, you know, plants, you can actually change the space up considerably. So, you know, after three weeks or four weeks or a month, you can sort of rearrange your space to give it a different vibe, which I really like. And I think what you're saying about, 
you know, the positioning of the office is really important because mine at home, for example, isn't, doesn't have natural light, is a little bit dark. So you're gonna, you've got to find ways to kind of elevate it. So it is center candles, it is plants. It's, it's to kind of bringing in some of that sense of life and addressing all Absolutely. of the senses as well, right? Because it's not just visual. You want it to smell nice. You want no, it to that's right. And um, another thing you mentioned there is don't skimp on stationery. I mean, do not let me loose in office works or Kiki K. It's <laughs> going to go mad on stationery, but um, it's nice to have stationery. And look, I know this is, might sound a bit odd, but even if you don't use the stationery, it's nice for decorative purposes to have a full collection of good looking stationery. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but it, they, they are, you will, will always use them. You know, who wants just your pens sort of sitting around on the, the desk? You do want them to have like an, a designated area. And it is lovely if that then matches a couple of your folders and things like that to keep that sort of stylish element going. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking things like paper clips, which I have, but I still don't, I have no reason to use paper clips. I just want all of the stationery. So and I do yeah. love a cork board um, in a study area. I think that is a great way of um, introducing, um, you know, even quirky little pieces of artwork. You know, your, your kids bring home some beautiful pieces of artwork that you can, you know, you can pop those up on your cork board, but you can leave them there for a little bit and, and it's sort of interchangeable. Yeah, agree. Um, and on the subject of personalization, lighting's another way to do it, but it's important to think about the relationship between decorative lighting and task lighting. So Ricky, talk us through that kind of decision. I mean, where do you put the feature lights and then when does the task lighting come into play? Yeah, lighting's a, a massive part. So there's two parts uh, to lighting. It's the artificial lighting um, that we're talking about now. Um, and, you know, Obviously, natural light's the, the key, but when you can't achieve the natural light, then, then task lighting's very important. So um, it's being able to sort of turn it on when you need it. Um, it could be a, a desk lamp. It could be um, some, you know, built-in um, lighting. So a lot of the built-in joinery, um, you know, just um, below the overheads, you can have some strip lighting or some down lights that um, you can um, create on a dimmer, actually, that um, varies the amount of light that... Um, is allowed, you know, allows you to, to execute your task. Um, and then, you know, electrical, just, you know, with, with the whole lighting um, scenario, we touched on having holes in your desk. So, um, you know, able to bring tables through for, you know, lamps, you know, locate lamps within the desk. Um, yeah, very important. And I think it's very important too, to touch on what you were saying, Ricky, with the, um, like with your feature lighting, I don't think that can be your um, predominant lighting in your space. You do either need to have that natural lighting or some overhead sort of down, like down lights that is going to give you sort of that full light to the room. You know, these images here with the beautiful pendants, they are beautiful, but they are more there for aesthetics or sort of, you know, a bit of nighttime reading um, or, you, you know, you're quickly paying a couple of invoices at night they're not they're not there to be the sole purpose um, to have as your everyday light if you're working in a space for eight hours yeah we actually had a question um, on lighting from one of our from one of our viewers Lydia who's asked you know what are the best ways to use lighting in the home to, to maximize focus and productivity so is it is it natural light is that what we're ideally going for for productivity or can it be done if you're not near the window like in these images uh, it's either or, I suppose, if you think about it, you know, we're working from home at the moment. That's at 8, 8.30 to probably 5.30 during the day um, task. Um, so natural light, you know, I think is the superior um, element in terms of lighting, um, but you need to supplement that with um, artificial lighting. So, you know, directional lighting is in task lighting above your workspace is, is the ideal scenario. On the topic of secondary lighting, Jacinta, you said that, yeah, beautiful to have those decorative lights, but you do want the kind of workspace lighting as well. And I love that a lamp can be both the form and the function coming together. You know, it can work for you, but look beautiful as well. So some really nice examples of lamps here and in so many different styles. So I think it goes back to what you were saying before about think about the style of your home and select even the smaller pieces to work with the overall vibe. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, they, all of these type of lights, if I would be selecting one for a study that has aesthetics that I'm using through the rest of the home. So, um, you know, for instance, if I had other feature lights through the house that had some brass, I may want to then tie that into the study. Um, you know, if I had some um, some beautiful sort of marbles and black um, coming through in the areas, you might bring in sort of more of, yeah, the black and white. Um, or if you had a coastal kind of more relaxed vibe, something with the cane. Um, you know, table lamps are fantastic. It's a great, uh, much more cost effective option than to doing a, a pendant as a feature light that you can turn on and off. Um, and they're a great way to be able to put even a smart globe in them as well, um, which nowadays is perfect for being able to um, change your tasks. So from going from a cool light to a warm light. Um, how bright you want it um, because that can change during the day um, if you are trying to use natural light but some days if it's a bit more overcast and you need that extra light um, they're a great way if you can um, actually adjust sort of how much light and um, output it's giving you. And just be able to adjust sorry go for it Ricky. Just an additional thought on, on the natural light I think something that we really need to consider is the orientation of the room so obviously north and, and east are, are ideal orientations for, for window placements um, west obviously um, I wouldn't encourage um, just given the afternoon you know sun being quite um, hot and, 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 and overpowering so I think window location from a natural light perspective um, need to con be considered um, with the orientation of the room as well. So something to bear in mind. Yeah, and with the lamps as well, I mean, Jacinda, I know you're talking about the bulbs, but it's nice to be able to have adjustable head on some of that task lighting as well. And also thinking about things like, you know, the, those beautiful industrial style, industrial style Edison bulbs aren't going to be great if you're seeing this, you know, humongous bright light shining in your eyes. So think about, you know, moving the light throughout the day too, yeah? That yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So let's talk about what is currently trending in homes, Jacinta. Uh, you're out there on the forefront putting display home looks together all the time. So what are you seeing that's trending at the moment out there in the marketplace in terms of office look, feel, and even down to the smaller supplies? So those two first stop points is huge at the moment. So the wicker and the cane and the rattan that... 70s is all about, um, you know, those beautiful texture, the textures that they sort of create um, with a lovely sort of casual feel is really, really popular. Um, beautiful sort of natural tones coming through. So lots of timber um, and then tying that with a lot of sort of the earthy tones of linens, um, sort of um, quite fibrous fabrics um, like wools. Um, and then even, I guess, for in terms of accessories in your in your space, things that are quite sort of muted um, are quite popular at the moment. So all those sort of really handmade sort of ceramics um, and sort of clay, um, like terracotta type of tones is what we're really seeing coming through. Feature walls are huge. Um, you know, are we finding the V-groove is, is really coming back too. It creates a beautiful backdrop um, without actually having to add in colour if you don't want it, um, but it still creates that lovely sort of texture and a really nice example here of just creating a bit of a feature with the green paint behind that because I, I mean I'm always on a mission to get people to look at outside of white paint <laughs> that image on the left is such a nice illustration of creating depth and interest and I just imagine that wall is a plain white it just wouldn't give you the same sense of interest no that's right it really creates some warmth and I think that's quite important for an area that you're going to sit in um, for long periods of time um, you know it, it has that really sort of natural earthy um, vibe that we have here in Australia which I think is 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 lovely but it, you know the, it, it's still got a muted tone to that green it's not a vibrant bright green that you know you're going to get sick of looking at all day and I like that bottom picture uh, there as well, giving us an example of a home office that's slightly larger. So you can put in an armchair, for example, but I love that that screen there uh, kind of connects two rooms without it feeling fully closed off or fully open. So I, I noticed that in a few display homes where you hear that kind of nice screen that divides the rooms that still has that connection. Yeah, and that's a, a metal screen, um, you know, plantation shutters act in the same way, or timber screen. Um, so it's just creating a bit of transparency or privacy between rooms, but, you know, um, creating a purpose for that space. I, I love when, when rooms like this are, um, 
a fitted out with a chair in the corner because it enables you to get out of your sort of work chair and sit in a another chair if you're doing a different path if you're reading for some material or um, so it's it's a very practical space. And obviously getting colourful, Jacinta, very important. You mentioned that, you know, colour is a great way to add interest and depth. And if you want to go a bit dramatic with some wallpaper, you can do that. Yeah, you can. Um, you know, I love this one here. It's still, it's it's very dramatic in that it's busy, but it's it's what like what we would call a small pattern. So it's not too visually um, impacting when you're, if you know, if you're seeing that behind your screen for the whole day. Um, again, it's got that sort of muted tone to it. It's got a beautiful navy and greens um, coming through, which is quite soft and, and, and nice to have around you. Um, you know, I'd probably stay away from, um, you know, really bright primary colours like a bright red or a yellow or something like that um, that might visually start to kind of take your eyes away from what you're trying to um, to achieve on your on your screen. Mm -hmm. um, so earthy tones, like I mentioned, uh, work really well in these spaces. So, you know, colours like beautiful sort of duck egg blues, um, olive greens, um, what we call grazes. So it's like a really warm grey. Um, grey tones work really well. Um, you know, making sure it's warm, so not going too cold um, in its tone. And just be mindful not going too dark as well um, so it doesn't darken sort of that space. And just beautiful, beautiful examples here, particularly the one on the left. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people watching aren't thinking to put, you know, a topical wallpaper like that in an office, but it, it's so beautiful. And if this was out in the open, you know, near your kitchen or near your living room, it just allows the space to feel so much more interesting. And I guess readers less office, which, you know, isn't always beautiful, yeah? No, that's right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's that, again, that's got that beautiful sort of muted tone. So it's a perfect backdrop. Um, I think adding that timber um, above, on top of it gives it that sort of really beautiful warmth and those are the colours that you sort of start to see coming through that wallpaper and then the other two um, like what I was saying the beautiful sort of blue bluey greys and the greens work wonderfully as a backdrop um, especially with timber um, warming up that space. And just with colour as well, guys, I think uh, you need to consider the space. If you do have a small space, try and keep it quite light. Um, but if you do have a, a generous room as a home office, then you can probably ex explore a, a bit, bit more of a darker palette. Having a chat about style, we kind of touched on this before, the importance of the smaller elements. And this is very exciting for me because I do love stationery. But Jacinta, it is nice to think about, obviously we've talked about the joinery and the big pieces coming together. But I mean, this is fair for any room, but in an office, the small elements can be really important. So it's nice to mood board them, right? There's a really good example on the, on the right hand side there of putting a mood board together. So you know what the whole office is going to look like down to the finer detail. Yeah, that's right, Chris. We mood board every room that we do um, through a display. So we might, we'll do an immediate mood board of what we want the overall look to go to be. And then I'll start getting it into each room of, of exactly each element. And you can then start to see how this all works, even just the, you know, the gorgeous little circles up, up above that could be down to using those colours in accessories. Um, maybe one of those as a feature wall, say like the bluey green, um, the bluey grey as a feature wall, and then popping sort of those, that green and terracotta and accessories in front of that and you can see how it's really cohesive and working with each other um, and these accessories yeah um, you know some of these are just as simple as things like Kmart and Ikea um, office work so you don't have to um, go and spend a whole lot of money to still kind of give it that designery feel. And I love that even with the small, like that terrazzo um, pen holder, for example, if terrazzo, oh, if you notice these trends come out and you think, well, I don't want terrazzo in my bathroom or I'm not doing my bathroom at the moment, you can pick up the trend, but just have it in a small detail in your home office. Yeah, that's right. Like that beautiful pen, um, what you just said, and then having um, maybe a marble um, like chopping board, which you can see on the right hand side, just as a sort of a, um, a place to have some candles or something like that to create a beautiful vignette on the side of your study. And that's a perfect way to start tying it into your um, whole house. Yeah. All right, we are going to get to uh, questions in a moment. Uh, I can see a number of them coming through, but I just want to talk you through two additional places to get inspired after today's webinar, um, if you do want some more home office inspiration. And as I did say earlier, we are going to drop the links to those in the chat box down the bottom of your screen. So on the Metricon website, there are two important places to look under the inspiration tab. The first is the lookbook, which uh, is broken up into interior design themes that the team at Metricon have created. So just into there's 
uh, I think over 20, maybe 25 looks that people can explore in the, in the lookbook so far? Yeah, I think there is now. There's, um, we have so many more still to do. Um, we've opened up a number of displays lately that um, will have new lookbook themes. So um, yeah, next year should be quite a big year for lookbooks. And what's good about the lookbook is that you can, if you are building a home, get an understanding of what interior design scheme you might want to execute across the entire property. Um, or if you're just doing one room and you don't know what your style is, uh, the lookbook is a really good place to start to analyze and kind of go further and go, right, I've, I've spent some time looking at the different themes. I've realized I'm industrial. I realized I'm Hampton. So the lookbook's great for that. Uh, the second place to look is the gallery. So the gallery is broken up into individual rooms. So you can see lots of, if you jump on there, you can click uh, in the office section, for example, and look at all different Metricon display home offices. I mean, we've seen a lot of it today, but uh, it's like a Pinterest hole when you go on the Metricon inspiration tab. You can be lost in there for hours, um, but there is a lot of inspiration to get in those two places on the Metricon website. So as I said, we will um, drop those links into the chat box so you can open them up and have a look at those um, after today's webinar. All right, we're going to get into uh, a lot of the Q&A component of today's event. And I know, as I said, a number of you are putting forward questions in that box. So that's great. Do continue to do that if you, if you want to do that. We're going to bring Georgia back into the mix here uh, just for some questions. So I'm going to get to those now if I can just bring those up. So bear with me. All right, so I've got a question from Lisa. Advice on dressing a room as a part-time home office and occasional guest bedroom. And I think this is probably something that's going to come up for a lot of people who never intended that COVID was going to hit. I mean, none of us did, but had a guest bedroom and now they've got to squeeze a home office in. So Ricky, how do you go about planning that out so you get the best of both worlds there? Um, yeah, it's about um, creating the, right, um, the, 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 the space that's suitable to execute both tasks, obviously. So... Um, you know, that kind of scenario would really be, be best suited for a desk along one wall um, and then basically the bed um, on the other wall. So um, you still need to make the spaces quite inviting for both tasks, but um, yeah, it's, it's easily done. We're actually um, doing a lot of that on display at the moment um, where we do have a four bedroom home. Uh, we actually convert one of the bedrooms into a study slash bedroom. Um, just to give, give us a bit more flexibility because that's what buyers are looking for. Another option you could do too, depending on how much of a guest room it is and how, um, how long they'll be staying for, but you could even look at if it had a wardrobe, you could look at in, um, converting that into an actual study nook and then maybe perhaps look at a bed that's got underneath storage if, if it is just as a guest room and people are just coming over for a few nights. So there's enough for them just to be able to put a couple of things um, underneath the bed and then you've got this whole wardrobe that is now as a study nook if that's purposely what you're going to be using that room for every day. Yeah, excellent. Uh, thanks, guys. So question around the stand up desks, which I know we touched on earlier. Uh, what would you recommend we could do to make a stand up desk more aesthetically appealing? Which is a fair question, because I went to a friend's house recently, they showed me the desk and I thought, that's cute. <laughs> so sometimes they're not, they're not exactly as beautiful as some of the desks or the joinery we looked at earlier. So Jacinta, what are some tips on how to, how to make that situation a bit more aesthetically pleasing? It's probably trying to introduce that desk into the whole wall. So maybe putting it on um, a beautiful wallpaper or something like that. The stand-up desks are quite simple um, on their own. Um, so I'd keep it as, as um, less cluttered as possible. Um, so even if it has pretty much nothing on it, just, um, just your um, laptop or computer, and then maybe put some shelves off to the side for, for everything that you, that you actually need. Um, maybe bringing in some sort of beautiful greenery up on that shelving. But I think trying to create the feature wall behind it um, would be a great way to kind of try and draw it into that room that it's not the feature it's sort of the feature is behind it yeah i agree because i think all too often the room is white the stand-up mm. desk is probably black it's gonna be and white it, yeah, yeah they're no, white there's as no well depth, there's no layers so yeah like, that's like, right creating depth behind the desk or around the desk i think is a really nice nice idea i uh, got a question from viraj generally speaking would it be more cost effective to retrofit like the sna option uh compared to a full joinery so georgia is that perhaps something that you can address and because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people sitting here are thinking well is is sna better is joinery is very expensive so yeah can you talk to that yeah absolutely so um as i was mentioning sort of before i mean sna's uh 
far more of a cost effective option than the likes of your built in joinery, especially depending on a lot of the finishes. But I mean, we generally recommend it's probably best to you know, include it in your color consultation when you come in through studio, because, you know, it's going on your mortgage and like everything, you're paying it off over a long period of time. You're not using a high interest credit card to usually pay it later on, or, you know, after the build and, and after that handover process, a lot of the times you are quite strapped for cash in saying that the versatility of our product, we can retro retrofit them after, after handover and, you know, engineering and walls and studs and that kind of thing isn't an issues so I mean for us it's kind of the best of both worlds but um, I gen generally recommend you know especially finishing wise and and the suitability within your home and the fact that it's you know an exclusive product through Metricon it it's definitely something that I would include during the color consultation process because it's something that you can a, a lot of cost for you can use our 3d visualizer to go through and obviously complete all your finishings along with with your other finishings like flooring and that kind of thing yeah. Um, but but yeah I mean if it's a if it's something that you you want to do in the long run then for a metricon customer we're definitely happy to do that and our product allows for that excellent uh a question from sarah which i think is a really good question around window dressings for the home office you know she was saying a lot of the images we saw on the webinar today have a sheer curtain on them um but jacinta is it good to think about roller blinds plus a sheer i mean um sarah's got some concerns around the harshness on the eyes and reflection on, on computer screens. So how do you dress the window for a home office? Correct. Um, I would generally, you know, the shear is more there for aesthetics. Um, so that is, some, it will sort of filter some of the light through. So that would be great for um, still allowing some natural light, but taking away a little bit of the glare, but it would be great probably to either do like a double curtain where you've then got a block out behind if you really need to cut out that harsh light um, or have a, um, a solid roller blind behind that as well. Right. Just, just on those window yeah. placements too, Chris, um, try and avoid to have the window directly behind you. Um, it's always, you know, a good rule to either have the window to the side or looking out into the window because you get a lot of glare on your screen if, mm. if the window is behind. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, Great point. point. Yeah. Um, Stephen has a question around cable management when the desk is in the center of the room. So Ricky, do you have some, some thought on that in, in terms of cables, but also PowerPoint placement when it is sitting in the room facing you as you walk in? Yeah, it is very difficult, Chris, to have uh, freestanding uh, furniture uh, within the room, um, unless you're off a laptop that you don't need to charge, obviously, for, for a couple hours. Um, but most of the time, um, you know, uh, Furniture that is placed in the center of the room is really um, used for, you know, you know, paying bills or signing things or, you know, that kind of task work. So highly recommend if it's used for you know, periods of time, um, try and anchor it to a wall if you can, a desk. Yeah, great. Uh, question for you, Georgia. Um, the SNA products, are they currently in Metricon display homes that people can go and look at? Yeah, so we've actually, as I said to you, our, our desk and bookshelf range is coming early to mid-December. Okay. They're not kind of currently available in the display home process, so they're not on display. Um, but we have a, a number of media units uh, and some of our sideboards on display in saying that um, Metricon Studios nationally uh, as a point of sale, so wherever the customers are doing their consultation appointment, we're going to incorporate desks in that space as well. So... Um, for any of you Victorian Metricon uh, customers as well, we actually have a brand new showroom at our Brayside HQ location. So that's where we design and manufacture all of our SNA living product locally. Um, we're very proud of it, but we've got the bulk of that product on display and we're happy to take um, Metricon customers of interest through that space as well. So that's got the bulk of our products on display there. In saying that 2021, I think Ricky and, and Jacinta can also agree, SNA Living is going to be very present in a lot of a lot of the Metricon displays coming through. So we're excited to boost that program as well. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Georgia. So that is unfortunately all the time we have for questions. We're just going to ask you to take uh, part in one more interactive poll before we wrap up today. And this is just around more information that you might want after today's session. So these, uh, the results of this poll won't be shared with the group, but we'd love to know whether you'd like to speak to a Metricon new home advisor about building a new home, 
whether you'd like to learn more about the new SNA Living Wall Furniture Desk Range, or if you do want to get some information on having uh, me come to your home and do an interior design consult now that lockdown is over, uh, do, do tick that one as well. So I work with clients in Melbourne, but also do remote uh, interior design for clients uh, in Sydney as well. So if you do want to get some more information about an in-home consult, uh, yeah, just tick that box as well. As I said, this, uh, these poll results won't be shared with the group. So it's just for our own internal information to figure out what you want more of um, after today's webinar. So thank you for taking part in that. We're just gonna give you a couple more minutes to um, answer those questions. A big thank you to Ricky and Jacinta and Georgia for taking part in today's webinar. So good to see so many beautiful images of Metricon uh, display homes, but also to get some insight into the new um, the new range from SNA Living as well. Um, any parting words are from Ricky and Jacinta around just the key thing to think of when you we, you know you get off the webinar today, you're going to start thinking about your home office. Ricky, what's the one the one thing you want people to keep in mind? Um, I think the home office could occur anywhere within the home. I suppose, provided that you've got the, the key factors of privacy, the right amount of natural light, um, and a, a, a space that's secluded from sort of the noisy parts of the home, um, I think they're the big uh, takeaway points for me today. And Jacinta, how about you? Um, I would just say, just think about storage. Um, you know, your space, you still want it to try and be as clean as possible if you're going to work in it. So think of things like, you know, beautiful boxes or cane baskets that you can put on the shelves that you can quickly put all your things um, away in those. So you've still got a really nice clean work workspace. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Well, thanks again for being here. Great to get all of your knowledge and pearls of wisdom to impart on our webinar viewers today. Just for everyone watching, next Tuesday, we do have a Design Trends Kitchen webinar. So if you do want to create an amazing kitchen and get inspiration from Metricon Display Homes, please do register to come along to that. So you book that the exact same way you booked today's. Jump onto the Metricon website, hit the events tab, and you can come along to book in that webinar as well. Uh, but that is all from us here at Metricon headquarters today. Thank you again for taking part in today's webinar. Uh, for those of you who have been in lockdown, I'm glad that you're out. For those of you who are still isolating a bit at home or at least working from home, I do hope that today's office webinar did uh, achieve the goal we had set out to achieve, which is giving you some ideas and inspiration to make your own home office space amazing. Uh, after today's webinar, you will get an email sent to you with a little link that will just ask you to take part in a short survey, just to tell us what you thought about these online webinars. We normally do them in person, but of course we're delivering information in all new ways now. So hopefully it has been great for you, but if you could take a few minutes to take part in that survey, that would be amazing. My name is Chris Carroll. Thank you again for joining us today and we'll see you at the next webinar.